Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super interesting video today. We're gonna react to the perennial philosophy in three minutes. The reason why I want to react to this video today is not only because it is extremely short and concise, but moreover, perennialism is something that most people subscribe to nowadays. They tell you that all religions are supposed to be respected and that ultimately all religions lead to the same God. But that is of course a contradiction that cannot be if you actually look at the theology of those religions. Judaism proclaims that Jesus is not a prophet. Islam, on the other hand, does. Christianity goes so far to say that Jesus is actually not only a prophet, no, he is God indeed. So those three belief systems cannot coexist. It is absolutely impossible. It goes against simple logic and the law of non-contradiction. Jesus cannot be God and not God at the same time, which then implies, of course, that Christianity cannot be true if Islam is true. Guys, before we jump into the video, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy my content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Moreover, check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, now, with no further ado, let's have a look. The world's major religious traditions have varying beliefs and traditions at the institutional level, so they appear to be very different from one another. But as you move toward the contemplative level of these religions, they begin to converge. They become more and more similar in nature. That's because the mystical experiences of these religions, the very core upon which these religions are based, point to the same absolute truth. Whether you want to call that a union with God, nirvana, the Godhead, liberation, eternal bliss, enlightenment, spiritual awakening, Brahman, or something else, they are pointing to the same thing. Yeah, there is this famous quote that states the theologians all disagree, however the mystics all agree. But I have to make a point here because I come from a mystical background, a spiritual background myself, and I had those mystical, deep, enlightening, spiritual experiences myself. In those states, you experience a dissolution of the ego and ultimately the eyes of this world are stripped off, the filters of the matrix come off, so to speak, and you can get into a state that could be described as a union with God. But what does that mean now? What does it imply? Because if you actually look into those mystical writings of certain theologians, you will find out that all of them describe God as a perfect unity. Even if you look at mystics such as Meister Eckert, who was a German Christian theologian that actually subscribed to the Trinity, had to admit due to his mystical experiences that in the end there is no Trinity, there is only one God, there is only one substrate which he called der Grund. And therefore ultimately what the video here is saying is that once all the theological doctrines are stripped away and you have a real experience, experiential knowledge, then you perceive that there is only one God worthy of worship. And now we have to ask ourselves, hmm, which religion does teach that concept? Because in the background you can see this graph which proclaims there is an exoteric, an esoteric dimension and a religious traditions dimension. But then there is a deeper mystical tradition and through that you enter into the transcendent unity. However, the question that we truly have to ask here of course is, what's the point of those exoteric teachings of those religious traditions if they are false? 
Because if the mystical experience, we're going to presuppose that it is truthful, in those experiences, you experience that God is one, but your theology says that God is three in one. Or your theology says that God manifests in millions of deities that are equally God as well. So then we have to conclude, of course, that all of those theologies, those esoteric, exoteric theologies, are absolutely wrong. And besides the point, the mystics then would in turn agree with the teachings of Islam. I'm not talking about visions of angels. I'm referring to the subjective experience of oneness with all that is, an Yo. awareness of their oneness with the infinite, a deep interconnectedness, and ego dissolution. Exactly. As Alan Watts stated in his book, This Is It, it is a realization that his individual consciousness and existence is a point of view temporarily adopted by something immeasurably greater than himself. All the great spiritual leaders, Buddha, Jesus, Rumi, Krishna, Dalai Lama, Muhammad, and on and on, were leading us to the same absolute truth. Theologians may quarrel, but the mystics of the world speak the same language. All religions have these mystical experiences at their core. He used the term the absolute truth, and it is of course only Islam that presents the 99 names of Allah with the beautiful name al haq which, you guessed it, means the absolute truth. Allah, God in Islam, is the absolute truth. Here, however, the video claims that the absolute truth is the mystical experience. Of course not. The mystical experience is a way to perceive the absolute truth, to find out about the absolute truth. Theology can be such a way, a pathway for many as well. But the point of the story is that the absolute truth is God. He quoted Alan Watts there, and Alan Watts says as well that there is something higher than him, something absolutely perfect that is greater than him. Yet again, no matter how you look at it, ultimately, theologically speaking, it is only Islam that is the coherent doctrine. But they describe them differently because their interpretation of the Godhead is deeply influenced by the language and culture of these people. These mystical okay. experiences are beyond words and thought. So a Christian having a mystical experience would describe it very differently from a Buddhist having that same experience. No, it is absolutely not sufficient to simply blame it on language and culture. A Christian would describe God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He would claim that a human actually is God. One human, one unique human is actually God. That at the same time, the Son of God that incarnated and died for us, he died for our sins. That has nothing to do with culture and linguistic. I mean, especially if you look at the context, Jesus was born amongst the Jews. So therefore, culturally, this was surely not the context whatsoever. Those Jews were predominantly monotheistic, of course. It has nothing to do with language and culture. It is a theological description of who God actually is. So therefore, if we look into Islam, this has nothing to do with Arabic. He is uniquely one. He neither begets nor is he begotten, and there is nothing like him. So this description is crystal clear, and you cannot find such a description of God in any other religion. Every religion has different methods and practices that lead you to the same truth, or at the very least, an aspect of that absolute truth. Okay, what, what is the I truth? What I am very loosely describing here, when I say that all religions point to the same ultimate reality, is the perennial philosophy. I'm not saying all religions are the same. They are different. Their doctrines and beliefs are different. Some believe in one God, others believe in multiple gods, or no God at all. Yes. There are many paths up the mountain, but the ultimate end point is the same. Okay, but you said it yourself. How can the end point be the same? First, of course, we have to determine what the absolute truth is. Within Islam, the absolute truth is God. The way that those mystics describe it, they're speaking about God as well. So now, if the Muslim engages in mystical experiences, for example within Sufism, and reaches the point of full understanding that God is one, he actually confirms Islam. But what if a Buddhist gets enlightened, quote-unquote, and witnesses that one God? What does that mean then? 
That, of course, implies that Buddhism is absolutely wrong because Buddhism proposes that there is no God whatsoever. The same applies, of course, for Hinduism and Christianity that proclaim that God is not uniquely one. Every religion believes theirs is the ultimate truth. But if you expand your perspective, it's no. quite obvious that this God is the absolute truth. The religion is the vehicle to God. However, if the religion proposes that there is no God, then of course it cannot lead you to that one God. This cannot be the case. They must all be true to some degree, and that's because they are pointing at the same thing. The idea that my religion is correct and yours is wrong <sighs> is a terrible belief that has contributed to an oh. incredible amount of death over the last Ooh. several millennia. Yes, absolutely, and this is why perennialism and all of those new agey movements ultimately come from the devil, because it's nothing but falsehood and of course absolutely irrational and illogical. As I explained already, if Islam is true with the claim there is only one God worthy of worship, then Hinduism cannot be true. If Christianity is true that Jesus is God and Jesus is the third person of the Godhead, then Judaism in turn cannot be true of course. But perennialism, like all of those other doctrines, ultimately is hardcore liberalism. Boo-hoo, people killed themselves over religions, boo-hoo, so evil, so bigoted. Let's all come together and simply unite. Let's just all agree that we are all partially right. Nobody's really right, <laughs> no religion is truly true, no God is the real God, but we're all somehow right. Live and let live. That doesn't make sense, but this is the incoherency of liberalism, of course. Because nowadays, in this modern world, some people will say a woman is actually anything you want it to be. Other people will say no, a woman is a biological female. Are those just opinions? Is there an ultimate truth in this day and age? No, there isn't. All of it is subjective, right? Whatever you like to believe, believe it, but please don't impose it onto me. This is the essence of a weak society that has fallen away from God. It reminds me of a quote of Miyamoto Musashi, one of the greatest, if not the greatest samurai to ever live. He said, truth is not what you want it to be. It is what it is. And you must bend to its power or live in a lie. And people nowadays, they would rather live in a lie than give up their comfort. It is the matrix all over again with the scene of the red when he gives up the truth just to be comfortable. But yet again, the truth does not care about comfort, the truth is what it is, and therefore, yet again, no, it's not possible that all religions are equally true. From another faith, you can still take the lessons from other religions. Yeah, They're not necessarily opposed to each other at the deeper levels. And for those that are not part of any religion, you can ignore the dogma of religion and go straight to the methods and practices of exactly. self-actualization. Yes. Some people without religious backgrounds have experienced these deep states of oneness as well. So, being a follower of a faith may help, but it's not required. Yeah, yet again, absolute doctrine of the devils here. Because as I said already, I dabbled in mysticism, the new age, I even went to the Amazon rainforest and drank the cool aid with the shamans. You know what I'm talking about. The point of the story here is, of course, that he says... You don't need to be religious, right? You don't need a religious law. Just do your thing, man, and you can experience it yourself. The reality, however, is totally different. If you see what happens to people with no religious background that go into those experiences, many of them come out with psychosis and others come out with delusions of grandeur. How often have I seen people starting sex cults because they believe they are God and they can do whatever they want? do what the wilt this satanic doctrine has been proposed by Aleister Crowley, one of the most notorious Satanists to ever walk the face of the earth. Again, it's important not to get wrapped up in the terminology. Understand that these experiences are beyond language, but language can help point the way. That is true. Alright, this is it for today's video. I pretty much said everything I needed to say throughout the video, therefore I'm going to cut it off here. If you enjoyed the content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, as always, may God bless you all, much love and peace.